This guitar is pretty special. You can tell just by looking at it and listening to it that it's quite a bit different than any other normal guitar out there. Now it shares a lot in common with normal guitars. It's got six strings, a fretboard, a round neck, slotted headstock with six tuners. But as you can see, it's also quite a bit different. It's completely made of steel and it has its own built-in amplification system. Now there's no electronics or tubes or circuitry or anything like that inside this guitar. Instead, you have a completely analog, human-powered speaker system. This is a resonator guitar, or sometimes referred to as a dobro or resophonic guitar. And it is, without a doubt, the most unique guitar I've ever owned. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about what makes resonator guitars so unique and cool. We're gonna talk about their long storied history, what they're great for, how to play them, and why you should think about picking one up for yourself. Now to really understand this instrument, I think we have to take a look back at the origin story, how these things came to be. See, resonators were built to solve a problem. In the mid 1920s, big bands were huge. They were all the rage. But if you were a guitar player playing in a big band, there was no way to be heard. This was years before electric guitars and amplification ever became a thing. And as a lone guitar player banging out rhythms on your acoustic style instrument, trying to compete with woodwinds and brass sections, it was hopeless. Around 1926, John Dopiera created the first resonator guitar. Basically, the idea was to create a metal bodied guitar with a built-in amplification system, similar to phonographs at the time, or what we would now call a typical speaker. The guitar had three hand-spun aluminum cones attached to the bridge of the instrument, making the guitar louder than a typical acoustic instrument of the time could have been on its own. Now, in 1927, John Dopiera and George Beauchamp, who was the guitar player who originally approached Dopiera with the idea, formed the National Corporation, which is still around today making resonator guitars. Their first models were metal-bodied tricone resonators. Now, in 1928, Dopiera ended up leaving the National Company to go and form Dobro. And Dobro is actually a contraction. He formed the company with his brothers. So Dobro is short for Dopiera Brothers. And Dobro has become sort of the name synonymous with a resonator guitar, much in the way that clean Kleenex works. Whenever somebody asks for a Kleenex, you know they're talking about a tissue, even though Kleenex is a brand name and not an actual name for a tissue. So if you ever hear somebody referring to a Dobro, they're talking about a resonator guitar. Now there's a few different types of resonator guitars out there. The two main categories, first and foremost, are square neck and round neck. This is a round neck, meaning it has a round neck that you play like a traditional guitar. Whereas a square neck resonator has a thick square neck, sometimes being hollow, and the strings are raised off of the fretboard quite substantially, and you play those laying flat in your lap. These are really popular with bluegrass and country players. Now alongside that, there are a few different types of cone configurations. The first being the tricone, which is what this guitar has. There are three individual cones here and connected with a T bridge that is connected directly to the bridge of the guitar under this hand rest. Tricones are known for having the most sustain and sort of the sweetest overall tone compared to the other two main types. The next most popular would be the spider cone, which is what John Dopiera developed when he started Dobro. Now spider cones are really popular in the bluegrass and country world and they have a completely unique sound. The third main type is the single cone resonator, sometimes referred to as a biscuit 
cone. And that is just a single spun cone sitting in the middle of the circle here connected directly to what's called the biscuit or the bridge of the guitar right here. Single cones are generally the loudest of the three types of resonator cone designs, but they don't have as much sustain and they tend to be a little bit more mid-focused and punchy. Now, regardless of what type of resonator you're talking about, they generally all have the same kind of sound, which is completely unique. I love, love that sound. Now the resonator's heyday didn't last very long, no more than several years before electric guitars and amplifiers started coming on the scene in the mid 1930s. And it wasn't until the late 1950s and early 60s when they started to become popular again, not for amplification purposes, but for their unique tone. And this is primarily where a lot of the sounds that we associate with a resonator come from. This is when blues musicians started picking them up and bluegrass musicians started picking them up and playing them. And as a result, this instrument, this unique sound has become part of the American musical tradition, which is part of why I love it so much. <laughs> Let's talk about this particular resonator. Despite what it looks like, it's actually brand new. This is built by Matt Ike and his team at Mule Resophonic Guitars up in Saginaw, Michigan. Now I should point out, this video is not sponsored in any way. They didn't give me this guitar. They don't even know that I'm making this video. Now I've been a big fan of the Mule stuff for a while now, I've been following them on Instagram and Matt's work is top notch. This is a completely hand-built instrument. The body, the neck, everything is built by hand in Saginaw, Michigan. And there's a couple of things that make this particular resonator unique. First of all, the cone design. Like I said before, this is actually a tri-cone, even though aesthetically it looks closer to a single cone resonator. And this particular guitar has a brand new bridge design that Matt just came up with, which relieves some of the pressure on the cones themselves, allowing them to resonate a little more freely, giving you more sustain. <laughs> Now, as you've probably noticed, there's another really cool feature on this guitar, and that is it's got a pickup. Now, there's no volume control or tone control. There's literally just this mini humbucker here, but this allows you to do some really cool things, which is play acoustically and through an amp at the same time. Traditionally, resonators are played in an open tuning and with a slide. And I actually just did a video on the basics of slide guitar, which you can check out here if you're interested. And I think this style of playing works really well with the tone that this instrument naturally gives off. Even without a slide, it has a sort of vocal quality to it. Thank you. 
And the reality is there's a lifetime of study behind becoming a great resonator guitar player, which is actually something I'm really focusing on in my own playing over the next year. I really want to learn the ins and outs of the traditional way of playing resonator guitar, specifically the old Delta Blues style. I love the haunting melodies and rhythms that those players got out of these instruments. And I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to get that sound out of this guitar. I'm not quite there yet, but it is something that I'm working on. But you can do more with a resonator than just old style Americana blues and country playing. Especially when this thing is plugged in, it gives off a sound unlike any other guitar I own. And it actually can be pretty inspiring to take you to new places that you might not normally go. So that is the most unique guitar I own. Let me know, what do you think about resonator guitars in the comment section down below? Do you have one? Are you thinking about getting one? I'd love to know. If you wanna support the channel more directly, check out the Tone course. It's linked down below. It's a whole video course dedicated to the fundamental techniques to getting great guitar tone. You can also find affiliate links in the description box down below to the gear that I use to make these videos if you're interested in that, as well as links to sign up for the green room if you're interested in that as well. I'll also have Mule Resonators linked down below. Again, this video is not sponsored, but I really love the work those guys are doing up there in Michigan, and uh, I think you should check it out. So that'll be linked down below as well. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm Rhett Scholl. Thanks for watching, and remember there is no plan B.